Hi, I'm Fee Oberon. I just wanted to show you how to needle felt. I've got a book coming out very soon in September called The Natural World of Needle Felting, which has got all the details, but I just wanted today to show you the very basics to get you started. So we've got some carded wool. This is fibres, it's not spun, it's just the wool fibres that have been dyed. It's quite a coarse fibre and we're going to needle felt that onto something. We're going to pretend this is a body and we're going to recolour it. So I've got my needle and this is quite a coarse needle because we're using quite coarse wool and the action is you're just prodding up and down and you pretend the needle, you're like the sewing machine needle, up and down. We don't want any of this round the houses business, we're just needle felting it a little bit and if I pull like this I'm hoping that you can see these little stitches where the needle has grabbed bits of fibre and taken it down into the felt. So you can remove it if you've made a mistake, replace it wherever you want, but if you continue to prod it will become part of the felt object. It will all look like solid felt, you won't see where it, the beginning and the end is. Just show you one more time. Now that happens because on the needle there's little notches on this part. This is the working part of the needle. This is just the handle. The little notches are angled so that the fibres are grabbed and follow the downward motion. But because the angle, it doesn't come back up again. When you take the needle out, they're all released. This bit is nice and strong. This bit is very delicate and you have to hold it with a finger really close to the point that means that you're much less likely to prod the other hand if you hold it up here it's very difficult to know where the point is and you're more likely to damage yourself the other thing for safety this one we're going to use this this is going to become part of a penguin the point isn't going all the way through but if you're working on a smaller item you actually need something so I'll take that piece and work on it. If this was, say, going to become a beak, you need to work against something to take the point safely. So this is a felt block. Some people work against sponge. Sponge is fine if you're just getting started, but if you've got arthritis issues with your hand, it's not nearly as nice to work on as a felt block. And sometimes I make filled blocks, which are much easier for people with arthritis. But if you're just getting started, a piece of sponge will be all right. So this piece, I just want to show you how you could keep lifting it off a block and turning it and you're creating a flat piece of felt. But then what you could do is just fold that into different shapes. So I'm just going to fold it once and fold it again from the other side. I'm going to make a bit, almost like a rectangle but a little bit tapered and then I'm just going to roll it and when I finished rolling I'm just going to prod very carefully and attach it to itself and that would be how I'd make a little tiny acorn so something small like that I would start off with a piece of carded wool but if you're making anything of any size I would start off with a piece of pre-felt so I brought some here this is the one I like to use, it's quite fat, it's quite coarse, the, the actual fibres are coarse so it grows really really quickly. So if I just find some scissors and I'll cut a piece and again I'm going to go for the long tapered triangle shape. Back to having a block. And I'm just going to roll it. Prod to attach it to itself. And you've made a little ball shape very, very quickly. Now that could be the beginnings of a penguin head. This could be the beginnings of a penguin body. And to attach them to each other, all you have to do is prod from one to another. 
if there's still some squish left, that means that there's some spare fibers in there that the needle can grab and take into the other part. If it's really very firm, you might have to offer up a little bit of carded wool to act as those stitches. Now, if you wanted to refine the shape, you might add bits of carded wool to that. Say, if this was the neck, you'd want to neaten it up. And can you see how we're beginning to make a little head shape and a little body shape? Once you've done the basic shaping, you would swap the needle to a finer needle. This one, this is more delicate, the diameter is less. it's much easier it won't leave such big hole marks and it's how you would make the details of the face but you would always work with a larger needle this one is a size 36 the finer one is a size 38 you would work with a large needle and coarse fibers to start off with and then you'd finish off with fine fibers at the end and if i continue to work with this i'm going to end up with the little penguin here Something like that. and he's one of the simpler things in the book the book's coming out in September it's called the natural world of needle felting and there's I think there's more than 20 animals in there but hopefully today we've just given you a very very basic start of how you can start off with carded wool and achieve shape very very quickly and then adding detail, you can make beautiful little characters.